Pro Group Management. Workers' Comp that works for you. Welcome to Nevada Newsmakers on the broadcast today. Entrepreneur Guy Nora, he's running for governor and he's here for the whole show on an all new Nevada Newsmakers. Hello, is this D&D Roofing? Yes, it is. How may I help you? You did such a great job on my roof. May I speak to the owner? I am an owner. Oh, can I speak to your supervisor? Sure. How may I help you? I love your work. May I speak to the owner? I am an owner. We're all owners. Well, that's why at D&D we work so hard to keep your home safe and sound. Oh, no wonder. D&D Roofing and Sheet Metal. Local, employee-owned, here for you. Retail's impact on Nevada's economy? Enormous. 8,600 businesses, large and small, employing 145,000 workers. And last fiscal year, retail paid tax on nearly $60 billion in sales. We're the Retail Association of Nevada. We support retail, we help it grow, and we mean business. R-A-N-N-V dot org. Take a look at Pro Group Management and see how your workers' comp requirements can be met head on. By taking a proactive approach, Pro Group can assure that your company is meeting or exceeding state and federal standards. As you move forward in your industry, Pro Group moves with you, simplifying regulatory tasks, clearing the way so you can get the job done and look to your future success. Pro Group Management, workers' comp that works for you. Early in the morning or throughout the night, professional truck drivers are on the job serving you. Safely moving freight that's crucial to our economy. From the oldest industries to our newest innovators. From the exotic to the everyday. Trucks are everywhere, moving everything. Never afraid to embrace a future that makes Nevada and our nation stronger. Trucking moves America forward. Nevada Newsmaker Studio is located at the headquarters of the Nevada Trucking Association. Motion and purpose are a truck's greatest virtue. This is Nevada Newsmakers with host Sam Shad, a no-holds-barred political forum. Now, from the Nevada Newsmakers broadcast headquarters, here is Sam Shad. And back on Nevada Newsmakers, we're delighted to welcome to the program for the first time, Guy Nora. He's an entrepreneur. We're going to get into all of that in just a moment, but you're running for governor. Pleasure to have you on the program, sir. Thank you. Thanks. Pleasure being on the program this morning. So as I am getting introduced to you today, really, we met for just a couple of minutes previously. Um, the audience is getting introduced to you across our state uh, through this program. Yes. So let's start out with a little bit of your history. Um, you were born in Lebanon, correct? Yes. And um, you actually fought, correct? As I did. a child? How well, old were you? I was 15. Goodness. Uh, I joined the, uh, the Christian side. And uh, I actually was uh, fortunate enough to get enough training for a couple of weekends. You'd go away on the weekends and train in the mountains. And then when the war started, I was involved. How, uh, okay, I, I mean, for somebody living in the United States, mm -hmm. it's almost inconceivable because Lebanon, which, you know, Beirut used to be known as the Paris of the Middle East, um, and it has fallen into such chaos for all these years. Um, as a child, I mean, how did you respond at 15? Uh, uh, you were barely a man. It was, uh, what was important to me was, uh, uh, it, it was defending uh, my neighborhood, my family, my people, in that order. I mean, it was literally, um, there was a, a war started, and it was about, about political power, uh, people taking political power, and, and the Christians were playing defense at that stage. And for me, I wasn't looking at the big picture as much as it was just, you know, I have parents upstairs, I have friends behind me. Uh, the, 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 the crazy thing about a front like this one is in, a, in a city is that a street that is one day uh, where you, that you cross every day to go to school or go to work becomes the front. So in my case, my school was behind me, my dad's work was in front of me, Imagine any street here, McCarran Boulevard, right side one way, left side the other way. And that's basically what, what I was up against. 
and it was just about protecting my people. How old were you when you left Lebanon? I left, my, my parents, uh, 90 days after the war started, my parents moved me to the United States, to Alameda, California. So what happened is I didn't ask permission, I just did, I did what I did. And uh, I'd, I'd come back home off and on, um, eat, sleep, you know, pretty much. And at one point when I came back home, my parents said, okay, we're taking you to the airport and we're sending you to your aunt in the United States. And we're coming with you. At least my mom came with me and my sisters. So it was about 90 days. What was the takeaway for you in, in life from that experience as a child? Because you were old enough, 15 is old enough. You're not an adult yet, but you're old enough to understand. Probably the biggest takeaway has been in my career but also, you know, when I was in college, I played sports. Uh, so I played sports, I went to college, and then of course I had a career. And a lot of times people will act like a certain situation is life and death. For example, you win the game or you lose the game in a sport, correct? Um, or, you know, you're sitting in a board meeting and you have a very important decision to make and it's about the company's future or not, survival. But life and death is not life and death in the United States as it is where I came from. So I always had a sense of perspective. It made me the calmest player on the field, the calmest person in the room, and the person with a much different perspective. So really that's what I've, I was able to take from a personal, you know, li life and death is life and death. Non-life and death is not life and death. It's just very tough situations that we need to navigate in our life. You became an extremely successful venture capitalist. Mm -hmm. Explain to people, because I think the majority of people who are watching this program really don't understand what a venture capitalist is. And you've been a very successful one. Explain what that is. Yes, it's, a, it's an amazing American institution, again. It just happens here because of our culture and who we are and how we are. Venture capitalists are people who invest in, in concepts and ideas. In my case, it was in life sciences space, which is biotechnology and medical technology. But Apple Computer was started by venture capitalists. You know, they gave they gave them money. Um, you know, so all, all of the you know Facebook. Uh, but on my side, it was life sciences. So it was uh, medical technology, biotechnology, and what we do is we get together with let's say founders. Which and I'm going to give you a pretty simple example. Two founders. One is from Stanford, and one is from Harvard. And they're both they went to med school together, and they have an approach or they went to, to science, you know, they, they were PhDs in sciences together. They have an approach to, to cure cancer that's different from anything that we've done before. They come to people like me, and we give them the initial money to actually take their, their project from the lab into a company. And then there's a very long process that continues from there until you get to commercialization. So DISH to, to, to human is a very, very long 10 to 12 year process because it's very complex. There's clinical trials, so we are with them the whole way. We start out with them day one. We make an investment of um, one million, two million, whatever the number is, and then we follow them through the whole process, and we build the company with them. So your skills as a PhD scientist MD are much different from your skills that need to be done when you're actually running a clinical trial with the FDA. And then, of course, when you're in commercial, these skills are much different than, a, than a, uh, somebody who's a clinical person. So we work with you the whole way, and we help you get in new people. So I'm constantly hiring new people, constantly finding the best, constantly making judgment calls on who's going to be the best person to take this company best. Because it's my money, or it's my investor's money. So I take that very, very seriously. So we venture capitalists, we take a company from scratch until, success, until they become successful companies. Uh, again, pe people will know many of the products that we use today uh, have all been started by venture capitalists. And uh, in, in my case, I'm very grateful that many of the drugs and uh, medical devices that I've invested in are today being used on people that I see and meet in different places. And your companies have invested, if I'm correct, in over 180 different companies. Yes. My company, Alta Partners, which I founded in 1996, I uh, was a co-founder. We invested in 180 companies in biotech, we raised, in med technology, obviously, raised billions of dollars and created thousands and thousands of jobs, very good jobs. And at the end of the day, also for me, which was also good, was, you know, we, we had some cancer uh, successes and we cured some cancers. And of course, uh, heart, 
urology, you name it, any space we go in, we've had some very good successes. All right, let's take a break. We'll come back and we'll talk sure. about your political aspirations. Yep. You're running for governor of the state of Nevada. Yes. We'll talk about that when we come back. All right, thank you. Ah! Hey, Dad? Why are you learning? This place is great. Huh? You gotta try this. Wow, this stuff is great. People are gonna love it. Yes. Yes, they will. Ahern Rentals began as Signal Gas Station on Las Vegas Boulevard. Founder John Ahern grew the business by offering rentals. His son Don built on John's legacy, growing Ahern Rentals into the largest independently owned American rental company with 89 locations in 30 states. Don also brought his experience and vision to equipment manufacturing with Extreme Manufacturing and Snorkel. Today, Ahern Rentals continues to bring its family values to a new generation. Learn more at ahern.com. As you know, Reno is booming. Toll's development company is helping it grow with insightful design and development, building community with every project, adding beauty, adding excitement, emphasizing our shared humanity. Reno is becoming bigger. Toll's development is helping it become better, more livable, more enjoyable. To learn more, go to tollsdevelopment.com, tollsdevelopment.com. Before the masks, before the distancing, before the world changed, UMC was ready. Our response to COVID-19 began before the crisis did with our own team of infectious disease experts who've spent their careers planning for this moment. With a pandemic response plan, we would practiced again and again, and by blazing new trails and large-scale testing, including every patient we admit. Always ready. UMC. This is Nevada Newsmakers. And back on Nevada Newsmakers, we continue our conversation with Guy Nora, uh, Guy Nora, I'm sorry. Uh, he is an entrepreneur and he is running for governor of the great state of Nevada. Um, so you moved to Nevada six years ago, to Reno. Yes. First of all, why did you move to Reno, Nevada? I fell in love, you know, I, uh, I used to go skiing all the time when I was very young. You know, and, and so I'd, I'd come, you know, we'd come down the hill a lot of times and come to Reno to lunch with a lot of my friends. And it's always been a place in the back of my mind that I was very intrigued with. Uh, then, of course, you know, life went on, children, family, et cetera. And uh, I was, I was, uh, uh, California was just moving away from me, uh, mostly from a moral perspective, values perspective, political perspective. Uh, orientation perspective. Okay, I hang on. Let, let, let's go th into those. Yeah. What do you mean from a morals perspective? You, do you know what in Calif uh, in, in in the Bay Area uh, now it's gotten to the point where if you're religious, you kind of try to keep that keep that under a, a low profile on being a religious person. I'm Catholic. I go to church all the time. I try to, you know, we talk about it. You got, you got funny looks when you do this. I mean, so, so for me, it was kind of, it was begin. We were beginning to move away from, you know, where I, I had. There's this great show called Silicon Valley. Uh, it, uh, you know, I don't know if you've ever heard of it, but the the Christian is in the closet, and the 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 the, the gay person with two moms is actually right out there doing everything they can do. Nothing wrong with any of that. Nothing at all. But I felt that for me it was kind of beginning to move, you know. I just I, I had to almost be careful about my my religious beliefs, my my political beliefs, my you know anything. You know, you just had to be you had to be very very careful. So um, and you say values. What, mm -hmm. what what values in particular were you concerned about that were being lost? You know, uh, uh, I'm going to give you a perfect example. I was there for 20, 20, 25, 30 years. I hadn't said the Pledge of Allegiance until, uh, w uh, since I was in high school at Alameda High. I've been here six years, but really involved in this process for about six months. I've said the Pledge of Allegiance every week. Right? Love of country, respect of country, you know, flags. You know, y you don't see that in the Bay Area. A couple of neighborhoods here and there, maybe, and then you, again, you're kind of on, you're on, you're under, under pressure. Uh, 
So, so yeah, the, the American values, you know, all American values, the very simple love of country, uh, respect of country, civics. You know, I think my class in high school in Alameda was the last one that learned civics. I don't think we don't do civics anymore because my kids went to school. I, I, I watched it. Yeah, it's, um, civics are kind of taught, depending on what camp you're in, uh, by whether it's podcasts or whether it's news or, yeah. you know, political programs. Um, all right, so, so you come to Nevada. Um, you obviously like Reno, and you're enjoying being here. Um, you've made a, a bunch of money, mm -hmm. so you're not short of a dollar or two, and you want to get into politics. My question, and you're not the first person I've asked this question of, mm -hmm. is why wouldn't you start at a lower level to say, you know, try for a seat on the county commission, sure. uh, the city council, an assembly race, a senate race, rather than jumping into the biggest job in the state um, as governor? You know, people have asked me this question a couple I'm times. I'm sure they have. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I think you wouldn't know me if you would think that I would start at the bottom and work my way up. Um, but you did before. Uh, w w when I was a much younger man. Uh-huh. You know, so I understood back then, uh, you always have to be the right person for the right occasion and do the right thing for the right occasion. Of course, when I was starting in venture capital, I had to be a principal and, and an associate before I became a partner. But, uh, you know, A, the state doesn't have the time. B, I don't have the time. And C, um, I've done uh, a very, you know, I've managed complex organizations over and over and over and I've gotten them to get to success. So it's not like I need a learning curve here. And I don't want to learn politics. I wanna, I, I'm a governance person. Co politics doesn't interest me. So being Reno mayor, or, you know, no offense to anybody who's in these positions, by the way, uh, I don't want to learn politics. I want to learn, I, I want to do governance. That's what I want to do. And okay. that's why to me that was important. Okay, so let us imagine mm -hmm. that we are at the end of the election cycle and you have become governor. Mm -hmm you are now faced with nothing but politics. And, and plus, by the way, you're going to be running into a lot of politics all the way through the election cycle, both in the primary of and uh, in the general. Um, but then you're going to deal with a legislature uh, that is going to be possibly primarily com comprised of Democrats, sure. which means you are going to be dealing with politics. So how do you deal with that? Because so uh, being a governor is not just about governance. Oh, of course, of course. Uh, the, the, it's always not just about one thing. There's always things in the job that you know you have to do, which some people don't like, or some people don't want to do, or, you know, whatever. So to me, what's really important is that a, you, you, I will do governance as much as I can, and and I will push governance on everybody else. As far as dealing with the legislature, it's going to be pretty easy actually initially because it's going to be vetoing a bunch of stuff. You know, they've got a bunch of very very unwise things they're trying to pass. They think they're California. They're not. They shouldn't be. For example, we are not. For example, the, the unwise things that they want uh, to pass. You know, uh, we're, we're going to be a, uh, 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 well, the election laws. That was, that, you, know, a, you know, this AB, f you know, that, that election law was bad. The guy signed it. I wouldn't have. That's the first example. Um, you know, they talk, you know, the whole, ta they're taxing, you know, they want to, uh, they're always trying to play around with taxes. You know, they just add this tax here, add this tax here, this, the, the mining tax. Absolutely not. I wouldn't have signed that. That's another example. Um, they do, you know, they do. But you know, mining. Uh, you know, forgive me. I'm, I'm, I'm oh going to yeah. play devil's advocate here. I, I love it. And you are welcome to come back because yeah. we're going to run out of time eventually no. here. But but you're welcome to come back. Uh, but the mining industry agreed to this tax. You know, just because somebody, you know, just because they got bad advice doesn't mean that's the right thing to do. I, I could get into the brains. This is of the uh, state's second largest industry, run and, by. And a, two huge worldwide conglomerates. And why should we tax success? I don't understand. There are lots of other ways to do this. And, and if I was in charge, I'd go back and say, send me something that's a little different than this. I'm not appreciating this thing. And, and of course, then you have the discussions with the conglomerates and say, so you know what it is. I know exactly what it is. In this state, we've gone to the point where it's uh, tax them, not me, tax them, not me, tax them, not me. That's how business, business is divided and conquered by the politicians. And I'm not going to divide and conquer business. I'm going to try to bring everybody up so that we can all be successful and then everybody is able to do their work. So the tax, yeah, they, of course they agreed on the tax because it was their turn. You know, next is going to be gaming. Next is going to be let's find out another successful industry and let's beat them up, which is the absolute opposite of what you should be doing. 
with mining, we should be giving them R&D credits and say, we have some of the most important rare earth materials in the world, and, we're, and we want to compete with China. Go get them. Let's go and help you how to get these. That's the kind of stuff that drives me crazy. All right, let's take another break. We'll come back All right. uh, more with Guy Nora running for governor after this time out. I'm men's rights attorney Marilyn York, and because I represent men in all family law matters, women often call me gender traitor, woman hater, and even disgusting. So why represent men and target myself with these offensive monikers? It's simple. Children with fathers in their lives are six times less likely to drop out of school, 15 times less likely to go to prison, and five times less likely to commit suicide. So ladies, you can hate me, but please love your children more than you hate their fathers. Serving Our Kids Foundation's mission is to serve homeless, at-risk, and food insecure children in grades K through eight throughout Southern Nevada. During the pandemic, Serving Our Kids has seen a 42% increase in the number of children served, providing more than 4,500 meals to kids in over 100 schools weekly. Serving Our Kids is powered by community support and volunteers. To learn how you can help, visit servingourkids.org. Southwest Specialties has been making the homes and businesses of Nevada beautiful for more than 20 years. Their experienced designers and craftsmen create the walkways, backyards, water features, and a variety of outdoor cooking areas that add curb appeal and value to your investment. Call today or visit them at their website and see how they can make your outdoor spaces special. Southwest Specialties, creative, distinctive, Beautiful. This is Nevada Newsmakers. And back on Nevada Newsmakers, we continue our conversation with Guy Nora. He is an entrepreneur, a very successful entrepreneur, and uh, he is running for governor. And I'm presuming that you are looking at self-funding this campaign. Is that correct? Yes. Uh, as th th it's an interesting dynamic I'm learning about, which is you should self-fund, but you need to show broad support as well. Yes. <laughs> because otherwise they don't take you seriously. They think you're just a crazy rich you guy. You become again. John Connolly. Exactly. Governor of Texas. Exactly. Or the, uh, in California they had, uh, uh, what was his name? Uh, uh, oh, the, uh, the Greek lady's husband. Yes, yes. Yeah, okay. But anyway, so, so, so I have to show broad support. So I am actually fundraising every day just to make sure that people understand. Because you know, somebody's first vote is a check. You know, right. So, yes. So, so let's let's ask you about some different groups here. So, you, you said just before we went to the break that uh, you know if mining is today, then gaming is next. Um, gaming may be up sooner than we think because the Secretary of State has said that uh, the uh, the initiatives that are on the ballot um, uh, need to stay on the ballot. Mm -hmm. And so we'll see where that ends up. But that could result in a rise in taxes for the gaming industry. What is your relationship with the gaming industry? Have you made contacts with influential people in that world? So when we announced, uh, I spend every day about two hours calling people from uh, all over the state and have spoken with many, many people from the gaming industries, whether it's their lobbyists or some people in the, on, on the staffs or you know the governmental affair types. So just introducing myself, telling them what my story is, explaining to them why I'm here, what I'm doing. And that's basically what we've been doing with them. Um, you mentioned in the break there that one of the things that uh, you're strong on is diversification. Now, northern Nevada, as you have obviously seen, sure. it has become incredibly diversified. Um, in southern Nevada, you have at this point 150,000 hotel rooms. The gaming slash entertainment industry slash sports industry is the major player. Mm -hmm. So in diversification, Am I right that basically what you do with diversification is you balance things out? So if there's, God forbid, another 9-11 or some other, you know, uh, tragedy where, you know, or, or the Great Recession or COVID, where the gaming industry has to shut down, you don't shut down everything else as well. So you maintain your tax base. Is that your idea of diversification That's as well? That's exactly my idea of diversification. So. Uh, we, we tend to be, as a state, we tend to not learn from our, from our mistakes or we learn for a short period. We have a very short memory. You know, you had 2008, you had 9-11, and of course then you had COVID. Um, after 2008, they did a couple of things. They got Tesla up here and then everybody washed their hands and they stopped. Absolutely not. That's you, you push when you have the momentum. So for me, 
you know, let's look at what can, what can we bring in here. We have a lot of sunshine. There's so many things. You know, the state of Israel has done an amazing job being in the same kind of climate that we have. I would do technology transfer with them on everything they have. I would be, and I would personally be involved. That's the difference between me and some of the other people that are either running or that have ran or that want to run. I would be personally involved. And when I talk to them, I'll make sense because I know what, I know what technology transfer is. So that's just a perfect example, for instance. Uh, with regards to what you're saying in Southern Nevada, yeah, absolutely. You know, so gaming, there's a whole new side to gaming now. And it's not just casinos. And why, don't we, why can't we bring these people here? You know, we have an infrastructure in place. I know how to start, how to get people going and how to give incentives and how to talk to them. We should just start that whole process. It's a huge business. Are, are you talking about sports at this point? Sports, gaming, any kind of gaming, actually, because, you know, that's what, that's what it, it, it's, it's, it's entertainment. And whether, you know, we know entertainment better than anybody else. Um, to say the least. Um, well, it's been great getting to know you sure. a little bit, and you're welcome to come back and we can discuss more policy issues. Uh, but thank you so much for being here and good luck on the campaign trail. Thank you. And I'd love to come back and discuss more things. You will be very welcome. All right. And we'll be right back. So that Relax. Yeah. So I do this. Uh, no, no, just sit, sit for a moment. Yeah, yeah. Okay. No, no need to leave this second. Yeah. Oh, 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 we still have one more? Brian Culp of Photography was born in the rolling hills of Massachusetts, and now he can help you experience the stunning beauty of Nevada in a whole new way through the power of flight. Flying has always been a passion for Brian, and at Brian Culp of Photography, he can make your imagination soar. Brian has the creative mind and tools to tell your unique story. Experience the bird's eye view at brianculpaphotography.com. Hey, Dad? Why are you learning? This place is great. Huh? You gotta try this. Wow, this stuff is great. People are gonna love it. Yes. Yes, they will. As you know, Reno is booming. Toll's development company is helping it grow with insightful design and development, building community with every project, adding beauty, adding excitement, emphasizing our shared humanity. Reno is becoming bigger. Toll's development is helping it become better, more livable, more enjoyable. To learn more, go to tollsdevelopment.com, tollsdevelopment.com. Pro Group Management specializes in providing industries with the necessary components to satisfy and exceed workers' comp requirements. Every business has unique needs and specific regulations. Pro Group Management stays ahead of the curve, providing up-to-date services to keep your industry in top form. Discover how we simplify your tasks, improve efficiency, and reduce expense to keep you moving in a positive direction. Pro Group Management. Workers' comp that works for you. Watch Nevada Newsmakers on YouTube. You can do that now these days. We'll see you on the next broadcast.